Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, or whenever you're watching this. Uh, today we're going to look at Lesson 1.2, which talks about segments and congruence. So we have basically three terms we need to discuss. Then we have two postulates. What in the world is a postulate? Well, that's our first term right there. See that? Postulate. We're going to talk about that. And then I've got basically three examples and we'll be done. So let's get started with this lesson. All right, what in the world is a postulate? All right, a postulate is sometimes called an axiom as well. We're not going to use that term. Um, we're just going to use postulate through our book. But a postulate in geometry is a rule that is accepted without proving it. A rule that is accepted without proving it. And these postulates form the foundation of geometry. They are the real basics. Most of them are really simple. They make sense. You can never prove that a postulate is actually wrong, but you can't really prove it's right either. We just kind of accept them, and they make sense, and then from there we build some stuff off that. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in class itself and how they work, but that's the definition of a postulate. So we always start with postulates, and later on, on top of those, we're going to build some theorems. Okay, So we aren't going to hit any theorems today, though. All right, first one, ruler postulate. Basically, this is talking about distance. I'm going to read the ruler postulate out of your book. Don't copy it all down. You can look in your book if you want to, but I'm going to kind of shorten it up for you as well. It says in your book that the points on a line, okay, I have a line segment here, but if I were to extend that out with arrows, we'd have a line. The points on a line can be matched with the real numbers. Real numbers would be like on a number line. And the real number that corresponds to a point is the coordinate of that point. Okay, that's all kind of complicated right now. Don't worry about it too much. I'll explain it here in a second. Then it says the distance. Okay, that's what we're talking about here, distance. The distance between two points, we'll call them, the book called them A and B, so I'll just stick with A and B. The distance between two points, A and B, is the absolute value of the difference of those coordinates. So I'm going to get a ruler out. Okay, that's why it's called a ruler postulate. I'm going to show you what's going on here. So you can see, hopefully, pretty well. I'm gonna, I'll start here at the end. So 0, A is right at 0, and B is out at 3. So we would say that this segment is 3 inches long. Okay, This is the inch side of the ruler. Now what would happen if I kind of moved it over here and I started on the 2 and I ended on the 5? Does that mean now that it's 5 inches long because it ends at the 5? Well, no, that doesn't make any sense. We would subtract, and that's what, remember, it said the distance between the points is the difference. Okay, the difference means we have to subtract. So 5 minus 2 gives me 3 inches still. And it's really the difference, and it's an absolute value. Because remember, the order of a segment doesn't matter. So what if I did 2 minus 5? Well, that would give me negative 3. Well, negative 3 inches doesn't make sense, so that's why we use absolute value. Remember, absolute value means our answer is going to be positive no matter what. Okay, so 2 minus 5 is negative 3, the absolute value of that is still 3 inches. doesn't matter where I line it up. What if I went from 4, right, line it up there, 4, right, going out to the 7. 4 minus 7 is negative 3, absolute value of that, 3 inches. 7 minus 4 is still 3 inches. Okay, so really all the ruler postulate is doing is telling you that you can measure the distance of a segment by subtracting the coordinates of the endpoints. Okay, we'll do more with this on a coordinate plane in some other lessons. We're going to use a distance form later on. Okay, so that's really all the ruler postulate says. All right, we're not going to do a whole lot with that, to be honest with you, this year. Okay, next, we have the term between. Now, if I say that point, you know, y is between x and z, okay, between implies something. All right, so let's talk about imply. I told you earlier we're going to be learning a lot of English sometimes in geometry. Imply means that it says something without really saying something. It doesn't come right out and say, hey, this is what it means. But it means you've got to understand that it also means this. So if I say that y is between x and z, so let's say I have x and z here. Okay, When it's between, y cannot be up here. Yeah, it's kind of in between them, but not quite. Not with what we want to use this term for. Anytime they say something is between, it implies, it says without saying, that the points are collinear. And we talked about collinear back in the last lesson. So if I say that y is between x and z, that means that y has to be on the same line 
and then it's just somewhere in between them. Okay, so in that case, y is between x and z. If I had something like this, d, e, and f. E is not between D and F because they are not all three collinear. Okay? Y is between X and Z. E is not between D and F. So between implies that all three points are collinear. Right? And that's a, a big important thing as we move forward. So if we just say between, we know the points have to be on the same line. Right? We're going to use that word between with our very next postulate. It's called the segment addition postulate. Okay, this is the second postulate. Um, also, throughout the year, let me backtrack all the way to ruler posture. Throughout the year, I'm going to kind of give you stars for these. One star means it's really not all that important. We're not going to use it a whole lot. Two stars means we're going to use it. It's going to show up in your homework, probably show up on a quiz and test. Three stars, that's the most important one. It's really, really important. We use it a lot. We use it on our homework. We use it on our quiz. We use it on our test. It's going to show up on your midterm exam. It's going to show up on your final exam. We're going to use it in another chapter. All right, so going back to ruler postulate, it's probably a one star. We really don't use it a lot. Okay, segment addition, a little more common, probably two stars. All right, so definitely need to know this. It's definitely going to show up in your homework. We're going to see it on a quiz or a test somewhere. All right, this is what the segment addition postulate says. It says if B is between A and C, remember between tells us that they have to be on the same line, and then B is just kind of somewhere in between them. If B is between A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. All right, basically what it tells me is that I can take the length. When we don't put any symbol over the top at all of two letters, it means the length of the segment. Okay? Remember, if we just wanted to say the segment, we would put that little symbol without the arrows. With the arrows, it would be a line and so on. Without any symbol over the top, it means length. So the length of AB, this distance, however many inches or centimeters it is, plus BC, this distance, equals the whole distance here. It's pretty simple. It makes sense. Remember, postulates, we can't really prove them, but they definitely make sense. This just makes sense. Now, I can't do that. I can't uh, do that if there's a gap. Let me show you what, what I mean real quick. I can't do it if it's something like this. W, X, Y, Z. Okay? You can get that in the picture there. WXYZ. I cannot say that WX plus YZ equals WZ. WX, this part, plus YZ, that part equals the whole thing. Well, why not? Because there's this big gap in the middle. All right? Notice that these letters are the same here, B and B. X and Y, not the same. Okay, you can't leave a big gap in the middle. We also couldn't do something like this. We couldn't say YW, or WY, the way I wrote it, plus XZ equels WZ. So y, YW or WY, that big thing, and then XZ, that big thing, can't equal the whole thing because we have an overlap section here. Okay, so they can't overlap, they can't leave a gap in there, nothing like that. It has to be AB, and then start right away again at B, and go to the end. AB plus BC equals AC. This distance plus this distance equals the whole distance. That's what the segment addition postulate says. Basically, it says you can add little segments together to get bigger segments as long as they're all in a nice straight line. There's no gaps. There's no overlaps, anything like that. All right? Next term. Congruent segments. You probably have heard this term before. Congruent. It means same size, same shape. Now, segments can't really ever be a different shape. The question becomes whether they are the same size or not. So congruent segments are segments that have the same length, they have the same size. Remember a segment is one dimensional, a line is one dimensional, so it only has a length. So congruent segments are segments with the same length. There's really two different ways we're going to write this. First thing we'll do is something like this, AB equals CD. So let me draw that here. So AB, that one, CD, that one, and usually what we do is we put marks on them. Okay, so put a mark like this, I put the same exact mark on that. If they have the same mark, in this case just one mark here and one mark there, it means they're the same distance. They're congruent. Okay. If I write it without the symbol over the top, it means length. The length of this equals the length of that. Maybe they're both two inches. Or maybe they're both seven centimeters. I don't really know. I just know they're the same distance. So this distance equals this distance. 
However, if I want to say they're congruent, we write a little bit differently. Now we put the segment symbol over the top and the segment symbol over the top. And this is what the congruent symbol looks like. It kind of looks like an equal sign with this kind of squiggle thing above it. All right, I know we get really technical, squiggle thing. Okay, but that's really what's going on there. So we got an equal sign, got this little curvy thing above it, that's the congruent sign. If I don't use the segment symbol on top, I have to use the equal sign. If I do use the segment symbol, then I need to use the congruent sign. If you do something like this, A, B, no symbol, is congruent to CD, that's going to be marked wrong. Okay, don't do that. If you do something like this, A, B with the segment symbol equals CD with the segment symbol, that's going to be marked wrong. If you use the segment symbol, use the congruent sign. If you don't use the segment symbol, you're talking a length, that's a number, you know, eight whatever equals eight whatever, inches, feet, yards, anything like that, okay? So make sure you use the correct symbols. That's it for the kind of knowledge part. Let's talk application now, okay? So application. Go ahead and copy that number line down there. Um, I went from negative 5 all the way to positive 5. I've got A over here at negative 3, B at 1, and C at 3. And then we are going to find, I'm going to zoom out just a tiny bit here so I can fit all this in at the same time. And like I told you, I always seem to get that thing backwards. All right, there we go. We're going to find A, B. We're going to find B, C, and we're going to find A, C. So pause, copy that down, and then we'll come back in a second. All right, here we go. You should have already copied all this down. You should have paused it. We're ready to play. Now, how do we do this? Now, first off, let me tell you what it means when it says find A, B. Find A, B doesn't say, well, there's A, there's B. Oh, there it is. It's that. I found it. It's not like, you know, where's Waldo or whatever. That might be too old for your reference. But finding, it's not like searching for it. When it says find A, B, remember, without the symbol over the top, it means find the length of A, B. All right, ruler posture. Remember the ruler posture? It told me I'm going to do the absolute value of the difference. So from A to B, I could do negative 3 minus 1, and I'm going to take the absolute value of that. So that's the absolute value of negative 4, which is 4. Or, remember, order doesn't matter, so I could start with 1 minus negative 3. Remember, minus a negative means plus a positive, so 1 plus 3 is 4. The absolute value of 4 is still 4. So either way, I'm going to get 4 for my answer. For what? I don't really know. It, it didn't tell me. Um, if it doesn't give me a label, we will just usually call it units. Okay? It's kind of a generic label. All right, so I want you to find BC now. All right, pause, find BC. Go ahead and find AC as well. Pause it, find those two. I'll come back in a second. All right, so you should have gotten some answers there. For BC, I can do 1 minus 3 inside my absolute value. It gives me negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. I can kind of separate these here. Or, remember, order doesn't matter. So 3 minus 1 is 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2. I would put units on it again if I wasn't given a label. Now, if they told me it was inches or feet or whatever, then go ahead and put that label. Now, for AC, there's actually a couple different ways you can do it. You could keep doing the subtraction thing, or you could use segment addition. Since we're going to do a segment addition next, I'm going to keep doing it by subtraction here. All right, so negative 3 minus 3 from A to C gives me negative 6. It's inside my absolute value. It gives me 6. If I flip the order around, I could do 3 minus negative 3. It's still going to give me 6. There's my answer. You don't have to do both. As long as you did one of these for each, you're good. Okay? All right, next. We're going to do this example. So, I have a nice straight segment here, so there's no bend here at B. So B is between A and C. AB is 8, AC is 26, find BC. So copy that down real quick, put it in your notes, all right, come up with an answer. Go ahead and pause, take a minute or so to copy it and find the answer. All right, here we go. You should have gotten an answer by now. So if this is 8 right here, and AC, the whole thing, is 26, how would I find that part right there? Well, remember, segment addition says 8 plus this equals 26. Now, you might think automatically, I can just subtract. Yes, you can, but I'm going to write it as an algebra problem. So I'm going to call this x. 8 plus x equals 26. And then how do we find that? We subtract 8. x equals 18. Didn't give me a distance, so I'm just going to go ahead and put units on it. 
kind of get in this habit of labeling things. And later on when they start giving us labels, like feet and inches already be in that habit of labeling things. So it's 18 whatever. In this case, I just call it units. All right, last example and we're done. This one's a little harder. It's still segment edition. All right, so once again, copy this down, pause, attempt it. This one, some of you might struggle with a little bit. I'm not sure. All right, so X, Y, Z, Y is between X and Z. X, Y is 2X plus 3. Go ahead and copy that on there, 2X plus 3. Y, Z, this part is 3X plus 4. And then the whole thing is 42. Okay, so I want you to figure out how to solve for X and then find Y, Z. Remember, find Y, Z doesn't mean locate it or search for it. It means find the length. Remember, no symbol means length of Y, Z. All right, pause, get that done, come back, and we'll be done. All right, you should have found X. You should have stuck that in, plugged it in, inserted it for X, whatever term you want to use, and then found the length of Y, Z. All right, so how in the world do we find X? How do we solve for X? How do we apply the segment addition postulate? Well, let's go back to this real quick. All right, remember right here, AB plus BC equals AC. That's really all we're going to do. So let's think about that. AB is this part, the XY, so 2X plus 3 plus the other part, 3x plus 4, has to equal the whole thing. The whole thing is 42. All right, well, how do we get that? All right, let's do some math. Like terms. 2x and 3x are on the same side of the equation, so I can put them together and get 5x. 3 and 4 are also like terms. I can add them together and get 7 equals 42. Subtract 7 kind of running out of room on my paper here, but I get 5x equals 35. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. Usually I like to show that. I'll kind of put my fraction bar sideways there. x equals 7. All right. Now I still have to find y, z. So I'm going to take 7. I'm going to bring it back right here. Or you can do it up here. I don't really care. 3 times 7 is 21. And 21 plus 4 is 25. So y, z equals 25. Remember, labels, they didn't give me one, so I'm just going to call it units. We're done. Sorry, wasn't the camera there. Y, Z equals 25 units. Any questions? Remember, jot those questions off to the side somewhere. Make sure you have good notes, and um, we'll get some homework done on this in class in the next couple days. All right, excellent work on lesson two.